The Jargon Free Radio. Jargon Free Radio with pension guru Steve B. Brought to you by Little Voice Media, the video and audio specialists. Well, hello, it's Steve B. again and um, Jargon Free Radio. And today we're in Clarges Street in London at the London office of Saga uh, with my good friend, uh, Ros Altman, who's the Director General of Saga. Ros, welcome. Thanks, Steve. Hi. Uh, Welcome to you. When we last met, um, you didn't have a proper job, I think. And (laughs) this is is a big step for you. Uh, You're you're now in a regular job here as Director General of Saga, which is, um, you know, uh, it's just been this year, hasn't it? You've been doing this? Yes, I've been here just about a year. And of course, it it is uh, different having been independent for all those years. I'm now, uh, if you like, part of a much bigger organisation, so I don't just talk for me, but I'm trying to talk for all our over 50s, you know, millions of customers, so. Uh, we, now, we've known each other, haven't we, for a long time, and um, we, you know, uh, I, I guess you're, you're best known as one of the, well, the, the foremost campaigner on pensions issues in the UK, and you've certainly got a, a, a number of things to your credit there, but, I mean, it's not that long ago, is it, that we were talking about um, you know, the way means testing affects pensions, and you, know, you, you had a lot to say about that. Um, but I'm, just so the listeners know, uh, we, we record these and um, put them out pretty quickly. Um, just last week, uh, we had a few things happen in our world of pensions. We had national strikes by um, people who are upset about the way their pensions are being changed, uh, biggest national strikes we've had for decades. Uh, we had a, a, a big shift forward in the change to the proposed change to, to, to the retirement age for everybody, and it's all been brought much further forward than we thought. And we had a gap year really inserted into our new pension reforms. Uh, now, in any other industry, of course, that would be quite a significant amount going on. But in pensions, that's just a normal week, really, isn't it? I know. It has been a momentous time for pensions, you know. So many major things have changed over the past year or year and a little bit. And it's hard sometimes to keep up with it all, isn't it? You do a great job in, in helping people know what's going on. And, you know, it, it's almost a new piece of news per week at the moment. Yeah, in the good old days, pensions changed every year, but now it's every five minutes, isn't it? Yeah, it almost seems like that, doesn't it? And having said that, though, I think in the old days, you know, you and I have been talking about this for, well, probably more longer than I would care to admit, but it used to be the case that we kept talking about a change that had moved us in the wrong direction. I think so far, we tend to agree that most of the changes have been more in the right direction, which at least is encouraging. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just putting myself in our listeners, but we've got Steve B here and Ros Altman saying pensions are going in the right direction. That, that, that's something, isn't it? It is something. And I think partly it's because we have at last a pensions minister who actually understands pensions. Yeah. You know, we had a succession of, of ministers on the pensions ministerial merry-go-round over the last well, 12 years or so. And none of them stayed long enough to actually get to grips with the brief, whereas Steve Webb has been involved in pensions for an awfully long time. Uh, And Ian Duncan Smith also understands the issue. I do agree with that. We have two real statesmen there, don't we? Uh, Statesmen, not not, uh, really politicians who are looking to the next election, but statesmen who are looking to the next generation. Yes, and I think also two politicians who really want to make a difference. Uh, you know, I had an interview with Steve Webb a couple of weeks ago, and he was talking about the legacy he wanted to leave on his tombstone. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's you know. too young for that. Yes, but, but it shows that he really is committed to making a difference and believes he is uh, in a position to make long-lasting changes that he might be remembered for rather than just you know, holding the brief for a little bit till he moves on to the next thing. Well, good for him. I mean, the biggest change, surely. I mean, the thing that we were both um, quite active in uh, in the recent past, this whole thing about the way that means testing um, just eroded the value, the real value of people's savings. Uh, that, I mean, if, if he's looking for his legacy, that's, that's got to be a large part of it. That The fact that um, he, he may be the one who um, put the sword to means testing. Well, that was the first part of 
uh, what he would like on his tombstone, yeah. which was, you know, I've increased the state pension, made it a decent pension above the mass means testing level. So his idea of, which we should get a white paper on next year, I believe, possibly even next spring, um, for a flat rate, perhaps £140 a week-ish state pension, uh, should revolutionise pensions and also pave the way to make private pension savings safe again, which, as you say, and we've both talked about in the past, hasn't been the case for a long time, which was the second part of what he hoped his legacy might be, which was to get millions more people saving in a pension. And unless we reform the state pension and get rid of the mass means testing, I still don't believe that it is safe to automatically enrol millions, particularly of low and moderate earners, into a pension system that may end up penalising their pension. Yeah, we, we'd have no right to do that. But I, I do think, um, I mean, he, he's done a great job, hasn't he? And uh, we're, we're, we're lucky he's here. But it's um, interesting that you know, this whole idea of auto-enrolling millions of people into pension saving, uh, it does assume that everybody needs a pension, doesn't it? And that's do you think our pensions are... Yeah, I don't think pensions still are flexible enough for, for people these days. And, and this is where I would say, you know, one has to say, so far we're moving in the right direction, but I do disagree with a number of the specific details of the policy. So we're getting the high level moving well, but uh, certainly on the point about flexibility of pensions, it is disappointing that we still are talking about automatically enrolling people into a locked box and that very often will put them off putting money in in the first place rather than automatically enrolling them into a savings product. It's the saving ethic that we need to restore rather than just saving this thing called pension. You're listening to Jargon Free Radio with Steve B and special guest Dr. Ros Altman, Director General, Saga. It just seems to me that uh, now that we're in the 21st century, and, and it is possible that what Ian Duncan Smith and Steve Webb are doing now really is taking our pension, our, our, our post-beverage pension system into the 21st century, uh, really putting it back where beverage wanted it to be in, in the 1940s, a subsistence level pension for everybody so that their savings work uh, with the grain of their lives. For people these days leaving college, um, going into the workplace, maybe being in debt, um, long-term savings that are locked up for maybe four or five decades are probably not that attractive. No, uh, and they're probably not suitable either, which is a bit of a worry. You know, if you were an independent financial advisor faced with someone in their late 20s who's got quite a bit of debt, hasn't yet bought their own home, you probably wouldn't tell them that the first thing they should do is lock some of their salary into a pension that they can never touch for many decades unless they had other types of saving as well. It would be useful, wouldn't it, if people's pension savings could be accessed, or at least the part they pay in, not their employer. And, and isn't it a shame that if they opt out of a pension scheme, they opt out of the employer's contribution as well? Well, that has been my suggestion um, for helping address some of the problems that the pensions industry itself has with the idea of allowing people access to their pension fund. People having access to their own money, I mean, whatever next. But at the same time, helping people feel that they can trust pensions and, and safely put their money away. And that would be exactly as you describe. You know, in the auto-enrolment environment, you will have 4% of salary going in from the individual, and another 4 coming from the employer and tax relief. You double your money, it's a good deal. Yes, but if you then split that into two pots, one is your own money and one is the employer's money and tax relief, and you only allow someone to access the half the pot that was their own salary money in the first place, they may feel that it's safer for them to save. They wouldn't then lose the employer contribution. They would still have money accruing to them for later life and get the benefit of the tax relief. So, you know, it might work better. But what uh, the government seems to believe is that we're so far down the road of auto-enrolment that that would change the nature of the pension product so fundamentally it might undermine the efforts to get people to put money in in the first place. 
I'm not sure I entirely accept that argument. And I think we'd get a lot more people putting their money in if we allowed them access than if we say, well, actually, that money is confiscated from you for the next few decades. It, it's, the, the, the argument's phrased with this word, uh, early access. People will talk about uh, this phrase, early access. And I think that acts against the, the argument because it sounds like um, a, a, a get out. But I, I've been thinking about, you know, if you work for a, a PLC and you get um, share options, save as you earn, um, you know, where, where you're saving, uh, you, you put money into a pot an event, and, you, and you get a certain number of shares in your company you know, in five or seven years' time, further down the line. Now, I've been in that position in previous uh, position, previous job I had, and loads of people have been in that position. What actually happens there is that you have a uh, building society account, really, and you have this share account running, al they're running along together. And you can choose which one it actually turns out to be. A bit like Schrodinger's cat, you know, until you actually make your choice. It can be either one. It could be a share account, or it could be a, a, a building society. Now, in the early months and years of a five or seven year contract like that, I guess a load of people look at it and think, well, my car's on the blink. I'll take the money out. It's a building society account. And you just decide there and then. But the further you go along that track, the more you look and you think, wow, hang on a minute. You know, the shares look good. I don't really want to give all that up just to get my car fixed. I'll borrow the money. Uh, and it just seems to me that pensions could be a bit like that, at least as far as your money is concerned. Exactly. Where you, if somebody says to you, is that your pension, and you're 30, you ought to be able to say, I don't know. It yeah. might be, but it might not. I completely agree. If you could then use that money, the presence of that money, that you could crystallize at a whim, you could use that as collateral against the loan if you really wanted it, in the way that 401ks are used in some circumstances in America. It just seems to me that's more 21st century than our... You I'd know, probably go broader than that, and I'd say we might want to get rid of the word pension for yeah, this. I don't like the word. <laughs> and, you know, this is a workplace savings scheme. Okay. You know, your employer helps you. If you want to save, the employer helps you doesn't have to be a pension, necessarily. Although we could argue that the employer's money should stay locked in for you to provide that later life income. The rest of the money that you save, you can use to pay back student debt, you could use for a deposit on a home. Um, a it's up to you what you do with that money. But the problem we've got at the moment is if you've got a student who comes into a job out of university with thousands of pounds of debt, the last thing they'll be likely to do is put £50 a month into the pension scheme that they can't touch. So they might put that £50 a month into paying back the student debt, but that means they lose the employer contribution altogether. That's crazy, isn't And it? that seems to be a kind of distortion, if you like, in the marketplace, which isn't healthy and isn't going to encourage the kind of savings ethic that I think this policy needs to be designed for. It's not just about so the, pensions, the it's about saving. The policy's fine, but the products themselves aren't up to it. They, yes. they, we've got products, haven't we? I think we're saying it here. You've just said it quite clearly there. We've got products that don't work with the grain of people's lives. Exactly. Um, why? Because people's lives have changed, I think, partly. You know, it, it's unusual now that so many people have debts. That wasn't necessarily the case for well, the majority of workers before. They, for, you know, well, we're, I mean, not a, a debt, isn't it? You know, we're not even talking about mortgages. We're not even talking. I mean, we're talking it's always as been if normal. people haven't got to worry about a house well, at all, but, but of course you do. It's always been normal to be in debt and save, isn't it? Because that's what most of us have always done. Well, the thing with the mortgage was that you had an asset to back it, which you could realise and you could get rid of the mortgage. With the, with the pension savings, you can't get your money out of it. So, you know, if you are 30 and you've got a mortgage on a house and you're struggling, you can sell the house and pay back the mortgage. If you've got £20,000 locked up in a pension scheme, that's it, it's lost to you. So it, there control. is some difference you've lost control. here. And people's lives don't work in the same way anymore. People have different phases. They may change jobs much more frequently and they have more complicated financial needs very often. 
So I, I think the fundamental issue we need to address here is to help encourage people to save. I mean, you and I have said this for a long time. And in fact, I think you were the first person that put it like this to me. But we used to have a fantastically strong retirement savings culture in this country. People would put money aside for their future. We've got more money in funded pension schemes here than the rest of Europe put together. But true. actually, it's fallen apart. People don't trust pensions anymore. They don't seem to value savings in the way they did before, partly because the regulatory system has encouraged borrowing rather than saving, but also partly because, as I say, you know, people's lives have changed. But, uh Maybe just simple changes of the type that uh, the enlightened um, statesman we have at the moment might well be um, interested in helping people with, so that we get rid of this one-size-fits-all, exactly. you know, 20th century, take it or leave it, locked box. And that idea. someone else knows better than you yeah. what, happen, what should happen to your money. People want control of their money as well. They don't want to just give it to the clever person who they don't trust anymore anyway to manage for them. They want some kind of input. And otherwise, they'll say, no, it's my money. I'm going to do what I want. You're listening to Jargon Free Radio with Steve B and special guest Dr. Ros Altman, Director General, Saga. Now, now the, the date, uh, we, we've touched on it earlier, the, the date that you can access your state pension assets, which are not real, but they're as real as any assets, I suppose, uh, your state pension, um, that date's changing and it's, it's moving away from us ever more and more. I mean, just on a small point, I guess, walking through the doors here, downstairs into the Saga uh, London headquarters. Um, you know, uh, Saga, in, I, I don't know if things have changed, but I, I always thought Saga was kind of over 50s. It is um, over 50s. Uh, does, does that have to shift with the times and become over 58s or something? Is, is that the way it well, works? Not really. I mean, the, the, the point here is that the over 50s have a particular need and their, their lives are developing in ways that policy hasn't addressed. You know, one of the big issues for people in their 50s and 60s now is not, what do I do when I get old? Because they're not old. But it's, how do I plan my later life properly? You know, what options are open to me? There are much more options now than there were before. But you need help with planning it. And at the moment, we still have this ageism in the population as a whole, among employers and even among policymakers. You know, changing the state pension age is just one tiny part of what we need to do to catch up with demographic and lifestyle realities. You know, people are not old anymore. The idea that you should suddenly stop work at any particular it's age not bad for your health really isn't it? is is so old fashioned yeah i mean well, is it old fashioned I, I i wonder if it's something that you know generations ago never happened and just for maybe 150 years or so it's happened and we think it's normal but was it ever normal just to stop work uh, you know at an arbitrary date no it, it wasn't you used to work till you dropped you know it's like lying at the top of the food chain they only die because they can't eat anymore. So in the past, you know, with, with no state support, you had to work until you physically could no longer work and basically you were soon to die because otherwise you couldn't eat. So, you know, things have changed. We've had wonderful progress, but we had a period during the post-war years where you had more and more people being born. This was never a surprise, but it hasn't been properly planned yeah, for. So, somebody once said that, uh, I, I, was, I was talking to a politician, not, not, a, not a, a British politician, they said, well, the problem we have in our country is we have too many 30-year-olds. Um, but of course the problem 29 years ago was that they had too many one-year-olds. Yes. Why is it that demographics creep up on people? Because political time horizons <laughs> are so short. I mean, you know, th this whole bulge of the population that's coming through now, we should have been planning to help them stay working. If, if we spent all this money on health and keeping them alive longer, keeping them much healthier, it's a fantastic, fantastic result from all the investments we've made in health. But that does also give them the opportunity, and it is a great opportunity, to keep working longer, but not necessarily full time. So the nature of work in later life can and must change. That's, that's really interesting because uh, the we you're talking about there uh, uh, are all of us, yeah. um, society I guess, yeah. but in particular those who vote. 
um, because Indeed, they're the yes. ones who make the decisions, essentially. Uh, these over 50s who you know, Saga represent you know, and always have, soon will be the majority of voters in this country, won't they? They already are. So these At things the that you're election, voicing here, be... is that right? I, yes. I, knew, I knew it was yes. soon. I bet. So these, these people who, who, who you know, you're, you're part of the voice of that uh, group yes. of people, um, they, they will be the ones calling the shots. Yes. Um, yeah. And politically, it'll be dangerous to ignore them. So, you know, as we get nearer the next election, it'll be more and more important for policy to work with the grain rather than perhaps at the moment it's taking money away from older people who've saved because of the, and not the, rewarding the, the, them. The, the care issues in particular. Well, there is a big issue with care. You know, this is the next crisis coming along after pensions. You know, we haven't planned for care. We've got not enough money put aside for people's pensions. We know that we've got a crisis, but at least there are quite a number of billions of pounds there. When it comes to the costs of providing care for your older, frailer population and in increasing numbers, there's virtually no money put aside at all. So the opportunity for the industry to help people understand the need to save for care is certainly there for the taking. That message hasn't got through. Most people seem to think that they'll be looked after by the health service. That so, isn't the case. Yeah, quite. Um, I, I, the, 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 um, so once we've got things sorted out, so young people might value pension saving, more or less what we were talking about earlier, and we might not have... Not necessarily just pension saving. Oh, no, saving. sorry, long-term saving. Long-term no, no, saving, sorry, which I'm, can include care. My wrist there. Yeah, quite right. Um, uh, and then we fix things so that those in their middle age maybe in their 50s, maybe their 60s, even middle age now, um, will be um, able to um, mix the income streams that they have available to exactly. them, some yes. from savings, some from a different form or, or, or type of work. And uh, those... Some from the house, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, well, why not? I mean, why, you know, why die with assets? Exactly. You know, <laughs> seems pointless. Uh, you, know, you can't take it with you, I, I believe. It, it, absolutely true. Uh, and, and then maybe... Um, some insurance-based solution yes. for people as they uh, you know, reach great old age, uh, where, where you know some people are clearly not knowing who they are in advance, exactly. will, will, will find themselves in a, you know, a costly position. I mean, to me, I mean, we we, About, I, we we've covered the whole range of uh, you know, what I suppose this top, you know, pensions a big topic, but that in itself um, probably needs another um, you know, whole yeah. discussion, another another. Radio show, I guess. What income do you need in later life? Yeah. That's really what this is about. We, we've neatly teed up there uh, another interview that we can do uh, <laughs> maybe a bit later. But um, I, I suppose at the moment it's fingers crossed that this white paper next year really does um, yes. you know, uh, bring the sword to the uh, means testing monster. Exactly. And uh, you know, I suppose uh, then, great? then the two of us can go out for a drink on that because that's something that years ago we thought never would happen. Exactly. No. So, I mean, you, you were a great champion of it. And, well, uh, I, I, it was a whole bunch of us, wasn't it? Um, but uh, it, it was an issue that simply had to be dealt with. And Absolutely, and still has to. I mean, I feel quite confident. I don't know whether... whether you... I know that the will is there. The, the will is there, definitely. I just hope that there will be enough support across the political spectrum for this to push through. I assume there will be. Well, on, on that <laughs> hopeful uh, end point, uh, and once again, uh, listeners will be amazed, I suppose, that the two of us are talking in terms of uh, you know, optimism and yes. hope. Nice, uh, because isn't it? We're, we're known uh, to, to be moaners of, of a sort, or I am, maybe, and maybe not you. But, but uh, we're, 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 we'll bring this um, radio show to a close. But um, I think all we've really done is started the next one. Roz, thanks very much. Thank, Thank you, Steve. You. Jargon Free Radio. You've been listening to Jargon Free Radio, brought to you by Little Voice Media, the video and audio specialists. Please visit our website for further information and leave your comments below. Thanks for listening. <laughs>